Is romantic leading man status, is that something you desire? I mean, you haven't necessarily done films that would take you to that level in the past. It's certainly not something I uh, set out for. I mean, the two films that I've sort of done who have been, which have been sort of romantic leads have been, uh, you know, uh, Romeo and Juliet and this, uh, were simply chosen because they were, you know, the best possible films uh, that, I, that I saw to do. Um, it's certainly not, you know, something I'm, uh, uh, the direction I'm sort of going in. I think a lot of times if you, you know, specifically target a direction that you want to go in and, and don't sort of take chances. I mean, for me, doing, like, doing roles like this w was something completely different for me, especially being in a movie of this caliber. I've never done anything of this sort of size before, and uh, it, was, it was amazing. Yeah. Were you initially reluctant to take this role? A little bit. Um, <clears throat> just because uh, I haven't been... I don't really like sort of these gigantic, uh, m huge films for some reason. They seem to be a lot more about the special effects and less about actually a, a story with content, you know. Um, but I didn't want to discriminate against this movie just because it was huge, because it was a terrific script, you know. It was a great character and an overall, you know, overall it had a lot of um, important things uh, in a movie. So it was an interesting sort of thing. I, you know, took a chance and tried something different here, because traditionally I've so have done smaller, smaller films. Yeah. The love story between you and Kate Winslet's character is really what drives this film, and it works so tremendously well. And I want to ask you about working with Kate, but first I want to ask you, she got ill recently, London at the premiere. Were yeah. you there, and how, how Well, was she's, she was shooting in Morocco. She was doing another picture out there, and I think she got some sort of bug and had to um, go away for the night. I wish she was there, because we, we did a, <coughs> it was a royal premiere out there, and we, we sat next to the prince and everything. It was pretty interesting, something new. But she, I mean, like, I've, we went through so much on this movie. Kate and I were complete partners throughout the whole project and supported each other so much that, uh, you know, I wish she was here for all this, but uh, she'll be fine. Yeah. She's going to get better soon. Have you talked to her? Yeah, I visited her a couple of times. She's doing, she's already better. It was, I think, you know, a lot of work, and, and once you get something like that, it's rough. Yeah. Did you connect with her immediately once you met, you know, did you two realize, you know what, this is going to be good, we're going to be great together? I think we, we definitely initially said, oh, wow, we, we respect each other's work and we wanted to do, you know, there were both big reasons why we wanted to do this picture was to work with each other, too. Um, and, you know, as soon as it became even deeper when we started doing the movie, because we needed, uh, we definitely needed, you know, a shoulder to sort of lean on and we were there for each other constantly. I mean. When you shoot a movie for s up to seven months, you need, and through all the stuff that we had to do in this movie, you need somebody to, you know, vent <laughs> with. <laughs> so we did a sort of a lot of uh, all the complaining we needed to do, we didn't in the trailer, so we didn't need to bring it on set. But she was such a great partner and such a terrific person. Yeah. Really is. I mean, she's top notch. She's going to be one of the greats. She already is. Yeah, stunning. Well, both of you is a, is a great combination, definitely. Tell me about some of the difficult parts. I mean, first of all, well, there's so many first of alls, but you spend a lot of time in the water. Mm-hmm. <laughs> is that one of the tough parts? <laughs> yeah, I mean, <clears throat> there was so much stuff to do in this movie. It, it truly was. I think the most challenging thing was we. it almost had two phases. I mean, there's the whole sort of the reason why I initially was attached, uh, fell in love with the movie was because of the whole relationship between the, the two characters. And we, there was a sort of a phase where we sort of did that, then we moved on to the action-oriented sequences, which I, neither of us were used to at all. And it was almost like coming in every day with a, a new roller coaster to go on, some sort of new adventure to do. And, and it was cool the first couple times. You try it out, it's fun. <clears throat> you know, I never felt like my life was in danger by any means. I mean. Yet the occasional cuts and bruises, but you know, when you go to the 50th, 60th time doing the same thing, it gets a little tedious. <laughs> <laughs> but that's all part of filmmaking, you know, you gotta accept the good with the bad. Yeah, Billy Zane told me he tried to come up with a storyline where maybe his character was aquaphobic and, you know, he could stay out mm -hmm. of the water. You mm -hmm. try anything like that yourself. Jack didn't have much time to be aquaphobic in this movie, I don't think. <laughs> so uh, there's a scene, I mean, there's so many scenes, obviously, when you know, the, the ship is going down, but there's a scene in particular where you and Kate have to rush to the stern and you're 
clinging and the boat is tipping. How did you shoot some of that? I mean, how much did you two have to be involved in? It was an interesting combination because a lot of it was, you know, <clears throat> I mean, there was an actual ship there that we uh, that was on hydraulics that went up in the air. <laughs> it was like amazing. You went out in the, this completely fabricated studio in Mexico, and there was a gigantic Titanic sitting there. It was like a, you know, a huge sight to behold. Um, a lot of it was done um, in, in real life, surprisingly. You know, some of it was computerized. Um, as far as like the, the end sequence, which is probably the most climactic, uh, when the ship completely goes up and down in the water, that was a lot. Of that was done uh, for real. I mean, I remember. I remember the day we were there. <clears throat> I mean, it was completely surreal. We had, you know, 20 guys on bungee cords below us falling on top of each other and bouncing off girders, and then above us on a hydraulic poop deck well, while we were, we were chained on. And then looking up, you see, you know, 20 cranes around you with lights, and then a Jack, Jim Cameron swooping down in an elevator crane to a close-up passing you to a green screen. It's like, whew, <laughs> unbelievable. I'm making a big movie here. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> now you said you never really felt endangered, but when you're doing some of these scenes and you know water's rising, you're you know up to your neck in water. Did you kind of feel like you could imagine the horror the people actually went through? Oh, absolutely. It was. I mean, you, you definitely got transported a lot of. I mean, the attention to detail, not only in the events that happened, but everything around you was you know uh, to the T. Everything was completely done up exactly how it was. And when you have you know a thousand screaming people around you rushing to a specific direction you, your adrenaline gets going um, but it was an interesting period it was an interesting time you know and especially with the whole class struggle that went on during the Titanic it was really fascinating how a lot of the first class passengers sort of uh, were extremely arrogant and going out in all the lifeboats and left a lot of the third class people to sort of sit there and survive on their own it was a tragic story yeah, very tragic. I mean, there were. Th I learned a lot watching it. I didn't know a lot of that Not history. Not me myself. either. Before the, I, I, I learned about the movie. Yeah. Did you realize that James Cameron had this in him? Did you know his work, or what impressed you most about him as a director? Well, I'd seen his work before, and it was inter I mean, I think this was something completely different than he's ever done before, for sure. I mean, um, he's done action uh, pictures before, and I'd always noticed that in his films in the past, he always had, you know, the character development was always there in all of his movies. He paid a lot of attention to that. And I think more so in this movie than ever, you know, what the audience is connected to and attached to is these two people, you know what I mean? The sinking of the ship can be as uh, dynamic as it wants to be, but in the end, that's what the audience is connected with and, and emotionally attached to and pretty much interested in. I mean, the, not to say that the to take anything away from the ship sinking because it's amazing, but that's what I was that's what I was attracted to about about the film. And as far as Jim's concerned, I don't think any anyone could have done this movie besides him. He, uh, you know, he's completely passionate about what he does all the time and a perfectionist. And um, everyone around us doing the movie had to know that you know their focus needed to be on what was going on constantly. I mean, it's something you have to remind people of constantly d doing a movie like this because, you know, a lot of things can go wrong and sometimes did. Yeah. Um, anything that stands out in your mind that was a really scary moment for you? Nothing. Uh, I never felt like, yeah, you know, like I said, my, I never felt like I was truly in danger. It was stuff where we had to submerge underwater and, you know, pop up. But while there was, like, you know, water pushing you in a certain direction, but. You know, we always had scuba guys under us with nozzles ready to save our lives. It wasn't, it wasn't as dramatic as it, it seems. I mean, it's movie making. It's not like, you know, we're daredevils or anything like that. Right, right. It's a calculated risk. It was more of an endurance thing that, you know, to sit there and do something for two weeks at a time without, you know, <laughs> going nuts is. That was the main thing. <laughs> That's the challenge. I read a quote, I don't know if you actually said that this, that making this film made a man out of you. Did you mm -hmm. say that? And what did you mean? Just in the sense that, uh, you know, I, there were so many different levels to this movie. I mean, it, it sort of encaptured everything that a movie s could sort of have in it. That, uh, you know, there was nothing that we didn't go through on this movie. So, you know, I, I got a true lesson in, in, in movie making and, and what it's like to, you know, go the distance. I suspect this film will get 
numerous Oscar nominations. I'm her sure you've heard that already, and you and Kate included in that. Would that, in a sense, kind of be a nice reward for the, the intense uh, effort it took to make oh, this film? Of course, it would be wonderful. Be wonderful. I mean, it's uh, I actually seeing all the, all of it uh, put into sort of when it's actual reality in front of you, and you're watching all those months of, of work on screen. You know, you're you're definitely emotionally attached to the film. You know, I uh, you know this movie sort of went beyond even filmmaking to me. It's like from another world. This film. It's um, so you know, it was a completely new experience for me. I've never done anything close to it. Could you do, would you do something like this again now that you know that experience? Not for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to go back to the little ones for a while. <laughs> something small, no effects. Uh, <laughs> yeah, for a while, yeah. We'll see, but you never know, you know? Yeah. When you look at your career, I mean, you've done a lot of great work in a very short period of time. And even looking back to, you know, you started out on sitcoms. Growing pains. When mm -hmm. you think back on that, what what comes to your mind from that experience? I learned so much from every bit of work that I've done, and you think of the choice. I mean, only now I'm able to sort of look back at, <clears throat> you know, the, the beginning of my career. It takes you, for me at least, it takes me a while to sort of reflect on everything. You know, like right now, everything is completely surreal and unrealistic, and I know in years from now I'm able to sort of look back and see what was really going on. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Um, and now I'm able to sort of look back in the beginning of my career and the stuff that I learned and, and you know, it was all new and sort of fresh to me. And, it, and, and that's an important thing to sort of maintain. I mean, that's what I think a lot of, how a lot of great movies and performances are made when, you know, you take a chance and try something different, you know, and grow as an individual and as an actor. You feel you know a lot more about the work now that you've learned a lot in the last few years? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I've had a great education as far as, you know, doing movies is concerned from, from the roles that I've done. It's been, you know, like an acting college or something. You've worked with some great people. De Niro, yeah. what, a couple of times? Mm -hmm. Meryl Streep? Yeah. You take something from each of those? I try my best to, that's for sure. I mean, I'm usually... You know, working with uh, people like that of that caliber is like unbelievable. You just have to sit back and sort of, um, you know, it's uh, you definitely take things from them. I'd say more unconsciously than anything else. I mean, I never deliberately say, okay, now what? How does? How do they do this? Because I think each person has their own process. You know, whatever works for them, they should sort of do. But. I definitely learned a, a lot of a lot of different things just by watching them and, and seeing how they take chances, you know. Uh, I mean, that's what makes them terrific is the fact that they're constantly challenging themselves and, you know, taking chances in their work. Yeah. You got an Oscar nomination at 19 years old. And as I said, this may very well bring another one. Uh, when you look at 19 and now 23, did you feel like, wow, this is happening too fast? the first time it happened? Or? Yeah, I mean, it, not too fast. I was happy about it, you know. I was, uh, it was a trip. I mean, I, uh, I think I, I still have that mind frame. This is all, you, you know, like I said, it takes a while to sort of look at things for what they are. And, and uh, you know, I still have the same attitude, thank God, about what I want to do career-wise, which is to just, you know, keep learning as an actor and trying new things. And, you know, I don't want to get, uh, Stuck doing the same type of thing over and over again. I don't. I need. I mean, this is my life, and I want to make it exciting. And, and especially in my career, I want to take chances. You know. Yeah, Jack in Titanic is a very heroic type of character. Yet it seemed to me you, to agree, didn't overplay his heroism. Did you make a choice <coughs> to, you know, kind of make it a little more low key, not to go for full, full out, you know, Jack the hero. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, it was actually a challenge because, I, um, you know, playing somebody so sort of open-hearted and, and honest and, and, and um, you know, a, basically a kind guy with no demons or, or no internal struggle, which is what I'm sort of used to playing, what was a real challenge for me. I mean, you have to sort of swallow your pride a lot of the time and, and face being vulnerable and, and, and being, you know, uh, pure, which is which is not exactly the easiest thing in the world, surprising, is what I learned in this movie, you know? To be just a, a normal human being with no 
major problems to fall back on that you can constantly say, you know, as an actor, well, you know, he's going through this, so that defines that. But when you have none of that and you, and you need to just be an open book for someone, it's, uh, you know, it's difficult. Yeah. Is it, is it um, still difficult to you to have a normal life? Uh, something else I read that you'd said a while back about you realize you can't just be normal, that you have to lead a somewhat sheltered life. And, you know, every time you go out somewhere, people make a big deal about it, but you're only 23. That's what 23-year-olds mm -hmm. <laughs> go out. That's, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the truth is, you know, it's something you, you have to sort of accept. There's always, there's always negative things to, to every part of, uh, you know, life as, as the good and the bad and you take the good with the bad I uh, I certainly think that I'm gonna still go out go out and do the same things I've always done even if it will be you know not as easy as it was before just because you know mentally uh, you know I, I need that I need to sort of do the stuff that I've always done and go to the places that I've always gone and you know a hat you know reduces the chances of being recognized sometimes and sometimes it does the trick I can go out you know, for a whole day and not be recognized once. Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. You can still do that? Yeah. At least up to this film. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we'll see after this. <laughs> yeah. Do you realize, I mean, do you look at this film and realize this is going to be a part of history? I've made a history-making movie here. Absolutely. I mean, the Titanic uh, has a lot of sort of, it's a classic story. It's a, a real classic story in history. I mean, it has a lot to do with man's arrogance, you know, which is really interesting to me. It has a lot to do with man's, you know, <clears throat> blind fate that we're putting in technology. I mean, it was the Industrial Revolution at that time. Man was, like, kicking into full gear and making, like, the biggest ship in the world and making a proclamation to the world that they could, uh, you know, build a ship that was unsinkable, that couldn't sink. And they sent it out to sea, and tragically, it, it struck an iceberg and, and had tons of casualties because because they were, you know, you know, ignorant to what, what was out there. It's almost religious in a sense, you know, like the apocalypse or something. And it has a lot, and the whole thing that happened with the third and first class struggle where, you know, first class passengers got a great chance at, at survival and the third class had to sort of sit there and deal with their own fate. And it's, it's got a lot of huge themes. Uh, as, and it's maintained its fame throughout the, these years because of that, I think. And also there's been such mystery about it because nobody ever really knew what happened that night until recently, you know. So it's propelled as, as one of the great American tales, I think.